The International Workshop on Biosafety Laboratory and Management and Techniques was held November 3rd through the 9th, 2019 at the Wuhan Institute of Virology in Wuhan, China. This was the third such event held annually since 2017. The purpose of the workshop was to provide an opportunity over a seven-day period for researchers from developing countries to gain experience working in high containment biosafety laboratories. The Chinese Foreign Ministry and the China, China Academy of Science began the program as a way to demonstrate its commitment to the Biological Weapon Convention of the United Nations. Following the 2018 workshop, the Chinese government sub submitted the results to the BWC. Curiously, in 2019, they did not. The workshop was conducted in part by the controversial bat coronavirus researcher Shi Zengli and her second-in-command at the Emergen uh, Emerging Disease uh, Department at the lab, Han Peng Wei. Zengli is known for her groundbreaking work collecting SARS-like coronavirus samples and conducting an array of research on the samples at the Wuhan lab. So, since the Chinese government did not submit the results of the 2019 workshop to the UN program, how do we know the workshop took place? Because a Pakistani graduate student researcher named Fazal Khan, who attended the workshop in 2019, documented his experience on Twitter, photographs and all. Suspiciously, after IMV-1105 attempted to contact Khan and Shi Zengli about the 2019 Wuhan lab, workshop, Khan's Twitter profile disappeared, and so did his LinkedIn profile. What exactly took place at the Wuhan Virology Lab workshop during early November 2019? For that information, we take a look at the official itinerary obtained from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Handling pathogens in biosafety labs, exercises in biosafety labs, social activities, norms in animal experiments, and entry and exit of biosafety labs and accidents handling. Here's a look at the most significant items on the literal schedule of activities from the workshop. The two activities that stand out the most on this itinerary are the visit to a monkey research and breeding facility about two hours away from the Wuhan lab, and experiments that workshop attendees conducted on mice and monkeys at the lab the day following this trip. You may be asking why this matters. Remember Fazal Khan, the Pakistani workshop attendee? During the workshop, he captured this image of a biosafety warning sign posted at the entrance of a biosafety uh, level 3 laboratory at the Wuhan Institute of Virology just before one of these activities began. Looking closer at the sign, we can see that SARS coronavirus is one of the pathogens studied at the BSL3 lab. It is also well known that rats and monkeys are two animals used by the Chinese in the research of SARS coronavirus. So here's what we've learned. A biosafety workshop was held at the Wuhan Institute of Virology from November 3rd through the 9th of 2019. The result, results of the annual workshop, which began two years prior to 2017, had been reported to the UN's Biological Weapon Convention in previous years, but not in 2019. Dangerous activities were conducted by inexperienced researchers from developing countries. These activities included a visit to an animal research and breeding facility and experiments on mice and monkeys. The attendees conducted these experiments in labs that contained SARS and SARS-like coronavirus on animals that are typically used in research involving these pathogens. The world's most prominent expert in the area of SARS and SARS-like coronavirus research was one of the Wuhan lab researchers who conducted the workshop. When Mr. Khan's Twitter profile, which documented the 2019 workshop, was discovered, his Twitter and LinkedIn profiles vanished. The incubation period for the virus that causes COVID-19 is roughly two weeks. The timing of the Wuhan lab biosafety workshop in early November 2019 would have been roughly two weeks before the first known case of COVID-19 were discovered in Wuhan. This scenario would, scenario would have been the perfect storm for the outbreak of COVID-19, but will the international community take the necessary steps to fill in the missing pieces of the puzzle, or is this just a coincidence? 